Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, the Minister of Seniors and Housing dodged around my questions addressing this government's cut to the grants in lieu of taxes program on social housing. Her response that new anticipated provincial infrastructure funding will adequately compensate any shortfalls is unfair and overlooks the individual needs of municipalities, many of whom have not any capital projects in mind. How can the minister possibly justify her ineffective response when this government system is delinquent, leaving municipalities who have individual specific shortfalls for property taxes remaining unpaid? Mr. Seniors. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member for the question. It's a very important, and our government is proud of our relationship with municipalities and the investments we are making in our communities. The previous government made a decision to cut this funding, and we haven't been able to restore every cut that the previous government has made. The official opposition can't have it both ways. They can't support reckless cuts and also stand in this House to ask for more. That's right. Well, Mr. Speaker, really, I mean, we need it reinstated. Smaller mu communities will be hit hardest. St. Paul faces a revenue shortfall of $50,000, Pinoca, $11,000, Black Diamond, $35,000, Elk Point, $20,000, Boyle, $13,000, Lacombe, $75,000, Vilna, eleven, dollars and Slave Lake, $186,000. And I could go on. Given many municipalities have had to cut services and raise property taxes as a result, why isn't this government prepared to fulfill their financial obligations to municipalities, not all of whom who have an infrastructure project slated for this year? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you again to the member for the question. With the unprecedented collapse in the global oil price, this means that we need to be fiscally responsible in our decision making. Unfortunately, we're not able or in the position to prove every request for funding, but we do know that now is the time to invest in infrastructure like roads, bridges, and that's what we're doing. These investments will help keep Albertans working and support municipalities by getting shovels in the ground on important projects. It's not rocket science. You can't spend less and spend more at the same time. Second supplemental. Thank, thank you again, Mr. Speaker, and this time to the Premier. Um, if this entire infrastructure theory that has just been mentioned in place of taxes is faulty, given it doesn't correspond directly to the taxes owed from government-owned social housing facilities, Mr. Speaker. What's next? Courthouses, provincial-owned land in our municipalities, and other provincial buildings? Maybe the province will stop paying its water bills. How many other key municipal funding systems will be uh, harmed by this government trying to cover this faulty infrastructure replaces municipal taxes theory. Thank you for the question, Mr. Speaker. Certainly, uh, municipalities have needs, and we're working to make sure that those get addressed in a variety of ways. I have to say that they're very appreciative of the fact that we are continuing to move forward with MSI, that we're continuing to move forward with infrastructure investment in their communities, Mr. Speaker. I understand their frustration that we can't reverse every bad PC cut, but sometimes we need to take the resources we have and figure out how best to make them work, Mr. Speaker. So I'm really proud of the fact that we are supporting municipalities.